Okay, then you'll get your test today. You'll give it back to me tomorrow. But before that, we need to finish up the lecture. So we are in and finishing up related rates. And we've sort of made the determination that related rates problems as they are presented in most of the textbook assignments are not really what we're interested in here. We're looking more so at examples like this. You've got a situation where an economist is looking at the relationship between demand and price. So say you're a wholesaler. You are creating things to sell to other people who will then themselves use them in some kind of mechanical process. And say, just from looking at years and years of data, you decide the relationship between the demand and the price looks something like this. Here, demand is measured in thousands, and the price is measured in dollars. So according to that equation, you just have two variables. You have demand, you have price, and you could take a derivative. You could take dqdp and answer the question, if I start messing around with the price, what will that do to the demand? But there's a hidden variable in all of this, and that hidden variable is time. Time is passing. The price is changing as time passes. Demand is changing as time passes. So even though you don't see the letter T in that equation, and you don't see anything explicitly involving time, both Q, the demand, and P, the price, are changing as time passes, <coughs> meaning that these two qualities, quantities, are related to time. And we can ask what the relationship is then between the derivatives. In particular, we can ask a question like this. Currently, The price you are charging is thirty five dollars. But maybe that price has been steadily increasing. There is a lumber shortage. And as the lumber shortage gets worse and worse, your own costs are getting higher and higher. 
And as time passes, you are therefore increasing your price to try to compensate for your own increased costs. But of course, you can only do that so much because, I mean, in a perfect world, you would increase your price and people would keep buying from you and everything would be great. In reality, as you increase your price, the demand for your product will go down. So at some point, this stops being a viable strategy. So you ask the question, how is the demand changing? And going back to the title of this, going back to related rates, we're asking for DQ, DT. We've been told how the price has been changing. This is a rate of change, it's a derivative. So we've been given dp dt, and we, if we wanted it, we could certainly find dq dp. I mean, we could take the derivative of the equation on the board. So we have a derivative that we want, a derivative that we're given, and a derivative that we are not explicitly given, but that we could find if we needed it. And we need to figure out how are all of these derivatives related. And in particular, we need to do something that's going, not that one, we need to do something that's going to make this derivative we want appear in an equation so that we can solve for it. So how can we make the derivative we want appear in the equation? Well, we could take the derivative is kind of the obvious answer to that. We have this equation here. If we want the derivative of Q, We could take the derivative of both sides of the equation, and the derivative we want will appear. And it's really important to recognize at this point that the variable we are interested in is the hidden variable that is not explicitly appearing in this equation. We want dq dt. And it's really important to recognize that even though we're not using function notation, 
If we're suddenly interested in T, then we need to treat Q and P as functions. And in particular, if we take any derivatives involving them, we might have to use the chain rule. That's, I say, if we take any derivatives involving them, that's move from that abstract to the concrete, I've said that we want dq dt and that the easiest way to get dq dt is just to take the derivative of both sides. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll take the derivative of the left-hand side, and we'll take the derivative of the right-hand side, and let me rewrite this. A square root, a square root is the same as having a one-half power, remember? So we're going to be using the power rule to deal with this. And let's just go down step by step. On the left, the derivative of Q is is what we're looking for. We don't know what it is yet. We are trying to find it. So on the left, we take the derivative of Q and we get rather vacuously the derivative of Q. On the right, Caution is needed. So we hopefully recognize sort of right away that we have a chain rule situation here. We have a function raised to a power. And we have to remember what the chain rule says. It says to take the derivative of that outside function. So take the derivative of the power function. Stick the inside function back inside of it. But now we have to take the derivative Now we have to take the derivative of the inside function. And here's where it would be easy to slip up, get careless, and make an error. Because P, we remind ourselves, is a function of time, and we're differentiating with respect to time. So all of this, we'll just leave it be. We could rewrite it, but that's not really the point of this problem. Let's get to what is the point of this problem, which is this derivative. The derivative of 1570 is zero. No problem there. 
the derivative of this negative p squared is negative 2p times, that we use Leibniz notation, times the derivative of p with respect to t. If you've got a function raised to a power, and you take its derivative, you get that dp dt from the chain rule. The power comes down in front, the power is reduced by one. We take the derivative, we take the derivative of the outside function, stick the inside function inside of it, but then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And now we've got these p's and we've got these dp dt's. And what are we to make of all of this? Well, I've been told what each of these things are. I've been told what P is at the moment. That at the moment we're doing this analysis, P is 35. And I've been told how the price is changing with respect to time. I've been told this rate of change, that the price is increasing by 0 0.149 per month. So all we really need to do then is plug this into our calculator. I, let's see, hopefully the calculator is up and running. It is. Sadly, if I share it, I won't be able to see my equation, so that means the rate as I go. 0.5 times 15.70 minus 0.5 35 squared, all of that times 0 minus 2 minus, not minus, 0 minus 2 times 35 times 0 0.149. So we get this all into our calculator. Plus, you didn't take the first part by the negative half. Just do it to the oh, thank to you the very point. much. Is that? Let me see, my notes are correct, so I just didn't do it in the calculator. Let me go back to the calculator. Let's see. Entry will bring back the last thing we did, and now we can insert. A power negative point 
five. And that looks a little more reasonable. Remember that demand is measured in thousands. So if this <coughs> first number were right, that would be quite the reduction in demand. So negative 0 0.2827. So this is measured in thousands. So negative point two eight two seven thousands, negative two hundred eighty two point seven would be a slightly more natural way to state that. So there's an example from one field. Does anybody have any questions before we go right on to a second example? <coughs> so this time an example from physics. I think that the way physics is taught in Shadron, it's taught not to require any calculus, but Newtonian physics and motion and calculus are heavily interwoven. For example, we could look at kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of an object is related to the mass of the object and the velocity of the object according to this equation, k equals one half mv squared. example. A man with a body mass of 62 kilograms jumps off the diving board. When he is falling, at V equals negative 0 0.1 meters per second. Remember, velocity is negative when something is falling. How is his kinetic energy changing with time? And Maybe in a physics class, you'd just be forced to memorize this, but this isn't a physics class, so I'll either tell you or remind you that 
acceleration due to Earth's gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And I will also remind you that acceleration is the derivative of the velocity. So I've just given you a velocity, dv dt. So we're given a derivative dv dt, we want another derivative, dk dt. We need to relate the derivative we're given with the derivative we want in some way. And because we're working with equations here, that some way is really pretty straightforward. It's exactly what we did in the last problem. Let me give myself just a little more room here. If we want the derivative of k with respect to t, we can get dk dt simply by taking the derivative of both sides of this equation. So let me Copy that equation down, first of all. K equals, I'm going to simplify this slightly at this point. You see we're given one half the mass, but we're also told what the mass is. We're told the mass is 62, so one half the mass is 31. So 31 V squared. And now we're taking the derivative with respect to time of both sides. And just like the last problem, the key observation to be made here is that even though we're not using function notation, the velocity is a function of time. As time passes, the man goes up, the man goes down, his velocity is changing as that happens. So we're going to have on the right to use the chain rule. On the left, now this is just this is just what we're looking for. We don't know what it is. That's kind of the point. V of T squared. So when we take its derivative, we take the derivative of the outside function, we stick the derivative function inside of it, and then 
We multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And I skipped a step here. I mean, what I have written is right, but just to make sure we're all on the same page about that 62. So that's 31 times 2 <coughs> times v to the first power times dv dt. So that 31 times 2 is where that 62 was coming from. And that v to the first power is just v. And now v and dv dt were both given. We're told that at the moment we're interested in, this man is falling at a rate of negative 0 0.1. And we were either told or reminded that the derivative of the velocity, the acceleration due to Earth's gravity, is negative 9.8. And if we go to a calculator, we can type in, hopefully a little more carefully this time, 62 times negative 0.1 times negative 9.8. So we get this positive kinetic energy, 60.76. I'm suddenly blanking on the units of energy, so we'll just discreetly pass over that part of the problem. Um, but the kinetic energy is positive because kinetic energy comes from motion. The man's accelerating, his motion is increasing. As motion increases, kinetic energy in Increases. And that's it for related rate.